Look, I think if we vote to leave, um, I think that's a worry uh, for, the, for the UK. Um, you know, I think you then enter a period of uncertainty, and of course markets don't like uncertainty, and um, that uncertainty could prolong for a long time, which clearly would then, you know, affect potential prosperity. <clears throat> and so, um, I think with the, if you're investing in the UK, you, you would clearly, I think, would, uh, Mark and I were trying to talk about it earlier, I mean, there's definitely going to be some sort of outward yield shift, nobody knows how much. Uh, and then the question is, you know, do the redemption start? Um, as we all know from the Lehman catastrophe, you know, the best assets get sold first. Um, that's why the Bank of England's pretty focused, because, you know, if, you, if you've got assets in central London at three and a half, four percent, you've got a half or one point yield move. That's quite a bit on your capital value. So, um, you know, I think every uh, UK volumes, I think, you know, there's the odd deal. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly down big time. So then, then, therefore, do you step in and do you start looking at opportunities? I think the you know, American investors are kind of largely out of the UK at the moment. Um, <coughs> Europe, you know, Germany, solid, sensible. Um, Northern Europe, pretty solid, sensible, liquid. Southern Europe, you know, I think there are opportunities down there. But everybody, the more you talk to investors at the moment, there's much more of a focus on... <coughs> Uh, risk mitigation, um, attribution analysis, how do you drive returns, you know, which all points to the fact that they're thinking, you know, the yield plays over, and therefore it's all about how can you actually squeeze value out of real estate through, you know, better management, development, refurbishment. So it, it, we're in a different environment, for sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, if we vote leave, it's going to be an interesting summer. It has brought in a, a pause, uh, but I must say that, uh, well, we're trying to take advantage of the market a little bit, it being down where it is, and we're probably playing a game where uh, we're willing to negotiate, but with a Brexit clause, so if it does happen, uh, that we can pull out of the deal. I know that's not very nice, because really if you're you know, playing an opportunity, then you know, you've really got to take, uh, <coughs> take the downside as well. Uh, but then again, our pricing is relatively stable, so we're not playing the opportunity on the pricing side, uh, there is an asset out there that we'd like to have, but it has that scenario uh, that if the Brexit does come along, where are we going to be? And because it's not a small one, then you know we'd probably uh, step back and wait to see what happens to the to the office markets in in, in London, um, essentially. Um, which again, you know, being German, our, our biggest fear is the UK leaving because uh, to a certain extent we do see that as a domino effect on discussions for the rest of Europe. And I think it's a more political play. Economically, I do not see a big shift of, of employees or competence centers being dissolved. Um, there's no real reason for that to happen. You're going to have four or five years of contracts being renegotiated, and at the end, you're going to have some kind of an alignment and some kind of an alliance between the two parties that will work. I personally think it would be a shame to have uh, EU lead, uh, leave, because I think they're necessary for the uh, EU to lead that change. Uh, uh, who would have thought that uh, Germans would be looking towards English pragmatism uh, <laughs> to start solving issues again? Yeah? Uh, but it is indeed, I think it's a more valuable uh, uh, continent uh, with the UK involved than the other way around. And you know, we're not going to know what the knock-on effects are going to be. There will be some. There will be some for the continent as well. Uh, but for our businesses, I have to admit, we are taking this serious, but we haven't really slowed down our investment policies or investments in the US or in Asia uh, or on the continent, to tell you the truth. Uh, and we're not really seeing a big repricing issue on the continent either. You know, there's still enough players out there. There's enough capital out there. Pricing is relatively stable and still, in our view, way too low. Uh, uh, but it's, you have to play in these markets. Uh, so we're trying to deal with that scenario. And I fully agree, the yield play is over. I sure hope the yield play is over at least. And it's all about uh, looking for the right assets with the, either with the upsides or with the stable cash flow, depending which part of the market you're looking at and what your intention is. I think we have to take a little bit of a step back and think about uh, Brexit has obviously an implication for the United Kingdom, but it has also an implication for the European Union as a whole. Um, and I think for the European Union, it would be particularly drastic if one of its uh, key members uh, was to leave. I'm not saying whether the Brits should stay or not. Uh, I can't vote here. I know what I would, but I'm not going to say that. The key question is, um, 
that's going to lead to an entire repricing of, um, I would say, a large part of Europe because then the question of this unity staying together um, is exacerbated. And if we um, think about why Germany is so popular, because whatever happens um, on political risk, this is going to remain one of the stable countries. So that is why pricing there is driven to its, its current levels. And just to come back to the point before um, about whether Brexit is causing so much activity stop in the UK alone, I'm not entirely sure that's true. Our clients are typically value-add and opportunistic, what generally is termed as the smart and fast money, and they found it extremely difficult to invest in London for quite some time, have been gone to more regional cities, into the region, smaller locations, and do the same on the continent. So there was um, a plateauing or a thinning out of investor audience already before this Brexit debate 